Hello, my name is Abdul Mati Asiri and I'd like to welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. Uh, this video is the ninth in the series talking about the approach and landing the Boeing 737 for new pilots. And in this uh, video, we'll talk about the transition from IFR to VFR uh, when you are doing the training in the simulator, uh, which is usually ILS, either single engine or two engines, up to minimums. Uh, three points uh, will be covered mainly here. The first one is when to transition from the instrument to glass up to uh, see the runway if you are the pilot flying. The second point is where to look for the runway. And the third and most important point, which is to resist the temptation of uh, adjusting the view of the runway. And I'll talk about it more in this video. So now we have the autopilot is engaged. We are coming up on six miles final runway three four right here. Uh, autobus is engaged, ball lock, light stop captured, and we have extreme wind headed a little bit here. We have 24 knots from the right. Now, a lot of things that will be mentioned in this video have slightly or based on what we covered in the last video. So, if you have not watched video number eight, please go ahead and do before you continue watching this video. I'll leave a, a link for video eight in the uh, description here. So, I'm gonna release here. We'll leave the autopilot engaged for the first part. Normal call out. For the approach, let's assume you have disengaged the autopilot and auto throttle, and you are flying now. The uh, pilot monitoring will call, of course, the 1,000 feet, and then uh, either the instruments, ultimate instruments cross check, missed approach at your set, or whatever call your company is using, and then 500 feet clear to land, approaching to minimums. That is the pilot flying check or uh, an automatic call, and then pilot flying so you should say check minimums. Now, when you reach minimums. The pilot monitoring, of course, would be looking for the uh, runway or the approach lights. Now, the pilot flying should be still inside. And uh, sometimes in the simulator training, they will set up the minimums in a way that it is even hard uh, for the pilot monitoring to, to see, the, uh, see the approach lights even, 1, unless you adjust the seat and maybe a little bit higher and try to uh, move closer to the uh, nose of the airplane to make sure that the pilot monitoring can see the uh, or have a better view below the airplane nose. You probably will be looking more like this if you are pilot uh, flying an IFR because since you don't have much to see outside, so you'll be looking inside and waiting for the uh, pilot monitoring to call approach lights inside, runway is inside, or whatever call or pappy inside so there's minimums and let's assume that the pilot monitoring called runway inside 11 o'clock now if i take a look inside okay i have the approach lights here it's better in my opinion again uh, sometimes in the simulator it's very hard for you to see even the approach lights at minimums what i suggest at the beginning you hear the pilot flying calls approach lights inside 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock or whatever it is respond with a check or roger or copy that or whatever call acknowledging that you heard the pilot monitoring calls the approach lights inside but do not look up delay looking up for a second or two seconds to have a better view of the runway so this is the first point i suggest yeah that you delay the transition from the instruments to uh, look for the runway for a second or two to make sure that you have a better view of the uh, of the runway or the approach lights again in the real simulator at minimums sometimes they set up the uh, the uh, the weather in a way that it is even very hard for you to see uh, the approach lights at minimums so when the pilot monitoring say approach lights inside 11 o'clock delay the look but respond to the call so you say check or roger or whatever now you delay two seconds or so maintaining flying the instruments and then you look up now at least we have a better view of the uh, runway so this is the first point at minimums you are waiting for the call by pilot monitoring to say approach lights inside runway threshold is inside tap inside whatever call indicating that the pilot monitoring got uh, one of the uh, runway environment inside respond with roger or check acknowledge the call but do not look up delay looking up for a second or two and then when you look up you'll be closer to the runway with a better 
view of the runway. So this is the first point. And uh, the reason that I suggest that you delay looking up for a second or two, because if you look up and don't see the runway, then you'll be wasting some time trying to, to see the runway. And by that time, since you'll be flying manual, you might lose track of the glide slope, localizer, or speed. So you definitely want to avoid doing that. And there is no point of you looking at exactly minimums since the uh, weather is set up in a way that it is very hard even for you to, to see the, uh, the runway. So delay it for a second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever you feel like, and then look up. Now the second point, which is where to look for the runway. Now remember, and I have talked about this point in the previous video, for the last three minutes or so, your head and body has been aligned with the airplane nose and everything is pointing this way. So when you look up, you are expecting the runway to be here. You look for it, you look for the approach lights, you don't see it, you, you are wasting some time not uh, flying the uh, visual approach, nor you are monitoring the, uh, the parameters in the PFT, that is the uh, speed, uh, localizing glide slope. And by the time you find the runway, then you go back inside and you find yourself either deviating from the glide slope or localizing. So before coming up to minimums, five miles or so ahead of the runway, you know the speed and you know where is the airplane nose is pointed. You know where is your head and body are pointed and all pointed in this direction. But when you break, you know that your head is going to be tilted to the left to see the runway. So the runway is not going to be here if you are in, wind, uh, in calm wind, but to the left and the opposite is true. If the wind was from the left hand side, then the runway will be somewhere here. So this is point number two, which is to look for the runway in the right position with respect to the wind. Now another point that you can, or another tool that you can utilize to identify uh, the location of the runway is, uh, as you can see, here is the airplane nose and there is the track. So you know that your head should be pointed in this direction to be able to see the runway. So this is the uh, second point for this video. Now the third and most important point, which is when you uh, look up, let's say pilot monitoring set, approach license site, 11 o'clock, and you delay two seconds, then you look up and this is almost a reaction because again, your head and body were aligned with this picture. Then you see, oh, the runway should be here. And then you start turning to the left. By the time you do that, you see the airplane drift and then you start the correction. So you end up doing an S turn at the end of the approach. Light slow. Fifty. Forty. So when you look up, resist the temptation to change. Just trust the instrument, revert to the instrument. Give yourself some time to adapt to the view of the runway and then continue from there. Those are the three points that I wanted to cover and that is the transition from IFR to VFR when you apply an approach down to minimums like you do in the simulator training. So again, the first point is when the pilot monitoring calls the runway inside delay looking up for a second or two so you have a better view of the runway and not losing precious time away from the instrument. The second point is to look for the runway in the right position and that is by anticipation 
way ahead you know the the wind where is it coming you know where is the airplane nose pointed and where is the track and you'll have an idea of where your head uh, should end up and where the runway is anticipated to be with respect to the windshield uh, the third and most important point is to resist the reaction of trying to have the runway in the position aligned with your head and body so you look up return back on the instruments and by that time hopefully within a second or two your conscious will uh, process that this is the uh, correct view for the runway with respect to the airplane and then you continue the approach so i'm going to reposition now i'm going to disconnect the autopilot and auto throttle and uh, we'll demonstrate manual flying so let's assume that the uh, land checklist is completed i'll disengage the autopilot auto throttle and we'll fly manually so i don't have anything to see outside it's not a good idea of course to just look at the instruments but let's assume that I am not looking outside because it is uh, an IFR weather outside and I'm flying manual trying to control the glide slope localizer and speed so we'll do the correction here again small corrections use whatever instruments that you have the ND is a big help to maintain the uh, localizer and glide slope and all these points I have mentioned earlier in this series for the approach and landing slightly below glide slope correcting and again now I keep on repeating to my head when I look up looking for the runway it's not going to be here but it's going to be somewhere here so extension of this line which is the track so the runway is going to be somewhere in this area not here so alternative instruments cross check Mr. approach LTS set or whatever core your company is using that is by the pilot monitoring of course pilot flying should respond with check or roger any call is mentioned by the pilot monitoring you need to respond to it and that is indicating to the pilot monitoring that you are still uh, that you understand the call and you are still operating you did not uh, pass out or something We get closer to the runway, smaller changes since the glide slope and the localizer will be more sensitive as you get closer. And there is, let's say, the pilot uh, monitoring approach license at 11 o'clock. So I'm going to delay looking up for a second or two and then when I look up I resist the temptation to have the runway here. So this is the most important point. So I look outside, okay there is the runway threshold. I look back inside, oh, I am on the localizer slightly above the glide slope so it's not a big deal. And then I return back and now I transition to an IFR or a VFR uh, approach. Uh, that's it for the transition from IFR to VFR when you fly an approach down to minimums. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the cross one, crosswind uh, landing and we'll talk about the rollout either in the next video or the video after. So if you have any questions, comments or concerns, as usual, please let me know. I'm more than happy to respond to any questions you have. And uh, until uh, next time, this is Abdul Matiya Siri. As usual, wish you safe, flying and smooth. Lani, thank you for watching.